What a crazy exciting day in the AI world. GPT-4 has just dropped from the team at OpenAI. Let's take a look at some of the features and we'll jump into some real world example use cases for this. So one of the big call outs is GPT-4 can solve difficult problems with greater accuracy. It has a much larger data set. So if you'll recall GPT-3 and 3.5, which is what chat GPT was built on, had about 175 billion parameters. This, as GPT-4 has told me, is closer to a trillion parameters. So order of magnitude better from that standpoint. It's also able to handle much larger context. So you can provide it with up to 25,000 words and also return about 25,000 words or about 3x what ChatGPT was able to handle. Visual input, this is probably the biggest one. This is multimodality. When you hear people talk about being multimodal, it means it not only does text to text, but also image to text. And what that means is it's able to take a look at an image like this. What can I make with these ingredients? And then it's able to actually give you back a recipe. That's pretty crazy. They go on to talk about its advanced reasoning capabilities. The fact that it's now testing on things like the bar exam at the 90th percentile and 99th percentile for biology. This one's probably the most disappointing. They've made it safer. So it's 82% less likely to respond to requests for disallowed content. Look, I'm glad the next part is 40% more likely to produce factual responses, but I have a problem with the safety aspect of this. I think if they're going to do that, they should at least be transparent about what that means. And if it's leaning one way or the other politically, I don't know how I feel about that. Actually, I do. I don't agree with it. We'll just put that out there. So let's jump into some real world use cases. Now, if you go and you drop into a new chat, you have to have chat GPT plus in order to use this. And there isn't API access yet. There's a waiting list that you can get on if you're a developer. In the drop down, you've now got GPT-4, which is pretty amazing. And let's jump in and see what it can do. So the first thing we're going to do is provide it with a stock image of a person holding some balloons flying through the air. This is going to test a couple things. Obviously, the multimodal approach of being able to recognize an image, but it also has to deduce what's happening in that image and we're going to go a step further and ask it some other questions about that image. All right. So we said, describe to me this image. The image features a man holding a large bunch of colorful balloons that are lifting him up into the sky. The man appears to be floating effortlessly. So it goes through a great job at doing the detail of the image and what it actually contains. So I said, what would happen if we cut the strings to the balloons? If the strings connecting the balloons to the man were cut, the balloons would be released and float up into the sky due to the buoyant force of the helium or lighter than air gas inside them. A man, no longer supported by the lifting force of the balloons, would begin to fall back down towards the ground. The rate and impact of his fall would depend on factors such as his altitude, body weight, and the presence of safety measures like a parachute or harness. That's crazy. So let's think about this for a second. Not only does it know that this is an image of a man holding balloons, it also understands the physics of all those objects and how the context of them all fit together into the real world. It knows that if you cut the strings, that something's going to happen. The person's going to fall, the balloons are going to go up. That's pretty crazy level of reasoning just from an image. This honestly starts to make me think, how close are we actually to artificial general intelligence, something that's able to produce new information based on existing context. How close are we to human level abilities here? And if you look at the test scores and everything else, I think we're already there. So it's going to be an interesting couple of years as we start to play with this thing. Now for this next set of tests, we're going to go ahead and do something interesting here. I found a website that has a whole bunch of GPT fails. These are prompts that at least in GPT 3.5, it was unable to answer or it gave back a wrong answer. As I think we all know, GPT does a really good job of answering things confidently, even when it's wrong. So let's see if that's gotten any better. So this first one, does an anaconda fit inside a shopping mall? It's not possible for an anaconda to fit inside a shopping mall as anacondas are typically much larger than the size of a shopping mall. We know that's not true, but let's see if GPT-4 can figure that out. So GPT-4 first starts by describing what an anaconda is, and what a shopping mall is, as two independent entities. And then it says, in terms of physical space, an anaconda would indeed fit inside a shopping mall as malls usually have ample room for such a large snake. Oh, there you go. Good job. Why can't I run a two mile marathon? Well, perhaps it's because marathons are longer than that. The marathon's a long distance race with an official distance of 26.2 miles. There you go. Perfect. You can see before it said, maybe you don't have the physical fitness or training or medical conditions. 
Why wasn't Donald Trump scheduled to meet the Italian king in 2020? Well, I'm sorry, but I'm unable to browse the internet and therefore don't have information on Donald Trump's schedule. That's not the bigger issue there. Let's see if GPT-4 catches the issue. There are two main reasons why Donald Trump wasn't scheduled to meet the Italian king. One, it doesn't have a king. Thank you. And two, COVID-19, scheduling conflicts, travel restrictions, all of those fun things we dealt with. Write a sentence that ends with the letter S. The dog's toys were scattered all over the floor? All right, I'm confident that you will get this one right. Otherwise, I think we should just start over with all this AI stuff and give up. Flock of birds flies gracefully through the sky as the sun sets. Perfect. Mike's mom had four kids. Three of them are Lewis, Drake, and Matilda. What's the name of the fourth kid? Well, that would be Mike. But I'm sorry, I don't have any information on the fourth kid. Was the old response. Let's see what we come back with now. And the name of the fourth kid is, as mentioned at the beginning of the question. What's taller, Mount Everest or the Burj Khalifa? The Burj Khalifa is taller than Mount Everest. And then it goes on to contradict itself. And it says that it actually is not. So let's see if GPT-4 does any better than that. Mount Everest is taller than the Burj Khalifa. Yes, how tall will the first seven foot president be? It's not possible to predict with certainty how tall the first seven foot president will be. Okay, well that's silly nonsense. Let's see this result. First seven foot president will be seven feet tall. So there we have it. At least we know that as far as logic and reasoning goes and the correctness of its answers, it's coming back with much better data than ChatGPT 3.5 was. Over the coming days, there's going to be a crazy amount of information that comes out about GPT-4 and all the different use cases for it. So be sure and hit like and subscribe. One, so you can keep up with that news as it comes out. But two, it tells me and YouTube that I'm doing a good job over here. I really appreciate that. I also have a free Discord server where we talk about all kinds of fun, exciting things like these breakthroughs in AI. So be sure to join that and we'll see you over there. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much.